In this next segment, you will learn about a completely different approach to the planning problem. We will still use search to solve planning problems, but we will consider a completely different search space. In this new search space we will be looking at, the search states will be partial plans. Partial plans simply consist of part of what we finally have in the solution plan. The components of the solution plan will be our partial plans. So let's have a look at what these partial plans, the search states in our new problem, will look like. Just as a reminder, let's look at state space search. What we did in state space search is we searched through a graph of nodes representing world states. So the nodes were world states in our search. What this means is that if we were doing graph search, the graph we were generating while we're doing search looks exactly like the graph of the state transition system. This is not the case for plan space search, which is what we'll be looking at here. Here we are searching through a graph of partial plans, as I've already mentioned. In this graph, the nodes are partially specified plans. So they're not complete plans that we can execute yet. And then we have arcs in our search space, and these are plan refinement operations. They tell us how we can move between partially specified plans, usually by refining them and adding more content to these plans. And finally, we have a new concept of solution to planning problems, namely partial order plans, in which the actions are not in a total order as we've seen previously. So remember, previously we have seen plans that consist of actions that are only in sequence after one another. But now we will also be looking at plans where actions can be in parallel, so they are partially ordered. If our goal was somewhere over here and we hadn't gotten there yet, this could actually be a partial plan that we encounter as a search node on our way to the goal state. So what is a partial plan? I'll now try to answer this question informally before I give you the formal definition. In the introduction to this course, I told you that a plan, in general, is a set of actions organized into some structure. In the kind of planning we've looked at so far, the structure was always a sequence. But this characterization of plans already gives us the first idea of what could be a partial plan. If a complete plan is a set of actions, then a partial plan could simply be a subset of those actions that are part of the complete plan. So not all the actions are in our plan. Also, if in our complete plan the actions are organized into some structure, then we could have a subset of the structure for our partial plan. In a sequence of actions, all actions are ordered with respect to each other. So again, we could drop some of the ordering constraints and have this as a partial set, a partial plan that does not contain all the ordering constraints of the original plan. Also, in the planning algorithms we've looked at so far, we always had a reason for introducing actions into a plan. That is the rationale of introducing that action to the plan. In forward search, we have considered those actions that were applicable, and in backward search, we have considered those actions that are relevant. An action being relevant or applicable is the rationale for considering that action in a plan. If we had recorded that rationale as part of the plan, then we could drop it again here and have a partial rationale as part of a partial plan. And finally, as part of the planning process, we have used operators and turned them into actions. That means we've introduced variable bindings. We've assigned values to the parameters of the operators to turn them into actions. Now we can use a subset of these variable bindings to create a partial plan. So this tells us there are four different ways of making a plan partial, namely by including only a subset of the actions, a subset of the temporal constraints, a subset of the rationale, or a subset of the variable bindings. Now, here is the formal definition of what constitutes a partial plan. And a partial plan is defined here as a four-tuple consisting of four components. It consists of actions, it consists of ordering constraints, variable bindings, and causal links representing the rationale why actions are in the plan. So let's start with the first component, that's the set A of actions in the plan. In fact, these are partially instantiated planning operators. So we take planning operators, we may bind some of the variables with values, 
and those are our partial actions that we consider part of our plan. We have a set of these actions, not a sequence, so they are not necessarily ordered with respect to each other as part of this set. The ordering relations are maintained explicitly in this ordering relation that is the second component of a partial plan. And the ordering relations consist of pairs of this form, AI before AJ, simply saying that the action AI, which must be a member of our set A, comes before the action AJ in our plan that we're building up here. The third component are the variable bindings for the actions in our set A. And these variable bindings tell us what values the variables can take. Variable binding constraints can be more general than just assigning a specific value to a variable. In fact, we will allow three different forms here, namely x equals y, saying that two variables must have the same value, or x unequals y, meaning that the two variables must have a different value, or we can specify a domain for a variable, saying this variable must have a value from a given set of values. Then the fourth component are the causal links that are part of this plan, and they are of this syntactic form here. They connect actions AI and action AJ through this proposition P. And here's what this all means. So AI and AJ must be actions in our current partial plan. Also the action AI, the first component, must come before the second component, so we must have an ordering relation in our ordering constraints of this type, AI before AJ. Then, the proposition P must be an effect of AI, so it is produced by AI, and it is a precondition of AJ, which means AJ is consuming this proposition. That is why AI is called the producer in this causal link and AJ the consumer of this proposition. The proposition P is the protected proposition as we're not trying to interfere with this proposition before AJ can consume it. And finally, since these expressions all contain variables, we've got to make sure that the binding constraints for variables that we're using in AI, in AJ, and also appearing in P are consistent and are also appearing in our binding constraints, the set B. So, in short, remember this. A partial plan is a four-tuple consisting of actions, ordering constraints, variable bindings, and causal links, where a causal link connects a producer to a consumer via a protected proposition P. So that's what a partial plan looks like, and the search nodes in our search space will be partial plans.